Isaiah 54, and I'm going to read 2 and 3. I don't know if you guys have ever heard it before, or maybe you guys have, maybe you guys have read it once or twice, but when you got it, say, I'm there. Does it look familiar? It does, right? This is our promise scripture, one of our promise scriptures for our ministry. It reads like this. It says, enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. For you will spread out to the right and to the left. And your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you, Father. We thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity, God, to be part, a part of such a great ministry such as God's anointed now generation, Lord. Lord God, we know that we didn't come here by coincidence tonight. We didn't come here because we had to, God, but we came here because we're going to have a divine appointment with you, Father. Lord God, we've come tonight to have an encounter with you, God. Open up our hearts. Open up our minds, Lord God. Lord God, let us absorb everything that you have for us tonight, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You can go ahead and take your seats tonight. But before we continue, I want to read the same scriptures in the message version. It says this. It says, clear, clear lots of ground for your tents. Make your tents large. Spread out. Think big. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pegs deep. You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You're going to take over whole nations. You're going to resettle in abandoned cities. Don't be afraid. You're not going to be embarrassed. Don't hold back. You're not going to come up short. Tonight, I want to talk to you about being marked for success. You and I are God's anointed now generation. But we're not only God's anointed now generation, we're part of this thing, uh, this ministry, this worldwide movement called Victory Outreach International. See, we're part of a worldwide movement that didn't just appear one day. We're not just a storefront ministry, but we're reaching the world for Jesus. We're not only reaching the world, we're impacting the world. Amen. We don't just go into a city and leave small impressions. We go into cities, we go into nations, and we leave impacts. This is the part, this is the ministry that you and I are a part of. See, right at this time, it was a time where the land of Israel was barren. Nothing was happening. Nothing was taking place. It was a, it was a, a dry season, you could call it. There was no fruit. Because why? Because they turned from God. But we see here that there was a shift beginning to take place. Because now we're starting to see the promises of God. See, they're, starting, they're beginning to catch it. They were beginning to, to step into their promise. See, just like you and I, you and I have a promise. You and I are marked for success. See, right here, the children of Israel, the people, they, they, they had a promise from God. They, the God, God said, hey, all this is yours if you, right? That's the way God works, is all this can be yours if, if you simply obey, Right? I'll give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in me, right? This is the way God works. Is, is so you and I have promises. How many here have promises from God? See, one of the greatest promises that you and I have is that you and I are descendants of a great vision. You and I are descendants of a, of a great vision, not man-made. Not it wasn't, it wasn't a thought to somebody. It wasn't something that somebody just like, oh, hey, we're going to do this one day. No, no, no. It was a prophecy given by God through a man for our great ministry. So you and I have a great promise. So because we're part of the promise, it makes you and I march for success. See, but there's something about success that, you know, just because you play for the Lakers doesn't mean you're a champion. Just because you're part of a winning team doesn't make you a winner, right? Just because Phil Jackson's your coach doesn't mean you're really going to win, right? See, because there's something about every player that counts. See, a, a coach could lead you a certain direction, but if you ain't putting your 100 in, right? So today, I want to I I I share with you three things. Is I want to share with you about being marked for success. See, we're here because we have a promise from God. 
See, there, see our success is, is in the promise. They were marked. The, the people right here that, that in the scripture he was talking about, they were marked. This was theirs. You could say they were part of a winning team in a way, just like you and I. We're on a winning team. How many here you could say you're on a winning team? We read scriptures about how God has gone before us and leveled mountains and broke the bars of iron. Meaning what is that? Our generation, we could just simply walk through that. We're marked for success. But I tell you this, is that your success is not just going to be handed to you. It's not, that nation's not just going to be handed to you. That city is not just going to be handed to you. You're not just going to wake up and somebody's just going to drop keys in your hand and say, hey, there's a building for you in that city. Sorry to burst your bubble. It's not just going to be handed over. It's not something you could buy at the store. This success that God gives can't be faked. See, but how do we experience this success that you and I are marked for? And today I was, or the other day as I was really, as the Lord began to drop this word into my heart, I began to think like a team. How many here have ever been on a team before? How many here have played football? On the count of three, I want you to yell out your team. One, two, three. No, 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 no. The, the team you played for. You guys are Rams. I'm like, you don't play for the Rams. Like, okay, wh- who's, here, who's here played a sport before? Who here has been on a team? Right? Okay, one, two, three. Yell out your team. Amen, amen. <laughs> but tonight I want to share with you three steps for success for our generation. As a team, as you and I want to be successful, in God's anointed now generation, we're marked for success. So I don't know about you, but I want to succeed. Anybody here want to succeed? Anybody here tired of being a loser? Anybody here tired of being in the back? Right? But today, I believe that God's anointed now generation right here in the city of Whittier, I believe that right here in God's anointed now generation all over the world, God has called you and I to succeed. See, but in order for us to succeed as the gang is the first thing we need to do is we need to train hard. We got to be a generation who's not scared to work hard. We need to train, and you know, you might say, okay, well, how do we train in the church? I don't see weights. I don't see where, where do we go? In the Word of God. See, the children of Israel didn't really know who God was to them, they didn't know His promises. They didn't believe the promises, so they began to drift away from God, which did what? It delayed their promise. Some didn't even see the promise because of their disobedience, right? How many have heard about the 40 years? Right? That was called a man-made delay. Because they didn't study. They didn't really know. They didn't really value who God was in their lives. See, you and I have a promise. You and I have a promise that's not for 20 years from now. It's, it's not for, you know, it's for now. The promises of God for our ministry, for our generation. This is why we're called God's anointed now generation. It's time for you and I to begin to succeed now. We don't have two years to wait. We can't wait five years. We can't wait ten years. My friend, it's time for you and I to begin to succeed in the things of God. But we got to train hard. We need young people who are willing to train themselves in the word. We need young people who are going to be rooted in the word. We need a generation who come and they're ready to be trained. Uh, They show up to rise up. They show up to gang night. They show up to Friday night. They show up to Sunday. They show up. Why? Because not because they have to, but because they want to be trained. See, a soldier doesn't go to battle without being trained. A soldier doesn't go to battle and win the battle without being trained. So it's important that you and I, as gang warriors, as gang girls, is is that we don't go to battle without being trained. But we must be trained for the battle. 
We need to be a generation that's willing to learn and apply. See, there's a two parts to that. Is you learn, you take it in, right? But you also got to apply the word of God. See, one thing about a successful team is that they didn't just show up to the game and then just win the game. See, the success in, the, in, in game day is only fruit of what happened on training day. How strong you are learning the word of God is only going to determine how strong you are on the battlefield. How much you believe and you, and you, and you receive man, the call of God upon your life. How much you believe and have faith in God is only going to determine how many victories you have on the battlefield. There's too many young people today walking away from God because they don't know what's going on. Or they don't know, how, you know well, what do you mean God's this, God's that, or we, we just don't understand. Because we're not willing to be trained. But I know, I know God is raising up a generation of young people right here in Victory Outreach Whittier that say, hey, you know what? I'm right here. Train me. I'm going to go into the D home. I'm going to go into here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go send me there. I'm going to go on this crusade. I'm going to go over there. I'm going to go to the UTC. I'm going to send me. I'm going to go to the MTC. And what those are is they're all training grounds. They're all training grounds for our generation. See, when we train hard, we're ready for anything. Like I said, the children of Israel didn't really know what they had. See, you and I, we have a promise. The Bible says that God's plans for your life are not to harm you, but to prosper you. But you won't know that if you don't train in the word of God. See, the Bible says that you're called to be victorious, right? You're the head, not the tail, right? You're, 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 you're called to be a champion, right? You, see, but you won't know these things if you don't train. You got to train hard. Tell your neighbor, train hard. So not only do you train hard, but in order for our team to succeed, in order for our generation to succeed, is we also got to follow the plays, Anybody ever played a sport? <laughs> this is a crazy hanky right here. Though. It's like, it's, I don't know whether to put it around my forehead. Or. <laughs> but in order for our generation to succeed, we got to follow the plays. See, in football, there's this thing called a playbook. Right? Anybody, any football players here? Right? I think in any sport, there's a playbook. It's the plan of what we're going to do in this game. Right? It's a play that everybody on the team studies. See, but we need to be a generation who follows God's plan. See, God has created a plan for you and I. God has created a plan for our generation. God has created a plan for our promise. But too many times within our lives and too many times within our generation is we want to tell God our plan. Too many times we come to God and we say, hey, God, I'm here, but I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I might do this. And we come, we come to the feet of Jesus, and we even try to come humbly. God, whatever you want me to do, God, I'll do it when I turn 21. God, I'll do whatever you want me to do after you give me my girlfriend. God, I'll do whatever you do. Go, God. Anybody like that here? Don't raise your hand. But we have to be a generation who follows the plans. We have to be a generation who follows the plays. See, see, because it's, it's like this. Imagine a team who goes to a game and nobody knows the play. Nobody knows what to do. What happens? The team loses. See, it's important that you and I, we follow the plan of God for our lives. It's important that you and I follow the plan of God for our ministry. See, see, you see, like I said, we're not just something that just popped up yesterday, right? God has given our ministry a plan. God has given our, our generation a plan. And I could tell you this, that it's a successful plan. It's a plan that it, it's been given by God. It's a plan that, that no man should change. It's a plan that is promised. It's a plan that you and I must submit under to bring success. 
Like I said, too many times our generation, we want to come and change things for the sake of, well, this is more relevant. And we find ourselves even compromising a little bit. We find ourselves kind of washing down the vision. We find ourselves trying to change principles in our ministry. My friend, you and I must be a generation who follows the plan of God. See, in order to bring godly success, we need to follow the godly plan. And I don't know about you, the success that God brings is far more greater than the success you and I can bring. But we got to stick to the plan. We got to follow God's playbook. See, in a playbook, everybody studies it. They execute the plays with one goal in mind, to win. God's plans are found in his word. We got to be faithful in it, right? The Bible says this part of a plan is that you be faithful in the little, God will make you ruler over much. God says, if you live like this, I can do this, right? If you're obedient in this, then I could do this. And that's the way God is. But we got to follow his plans. How many say follow his plans? See, the Bible, isn't, the Bible isn't filled with a bunch of rules. It's just one large plan for success. So many times we come and we say, man, being a Christian, there's so many rules. Nah, it's God's plan for success for your life, right? Man, why is my leader always in my business? It's called accountability. God's plan for success for your life, right? Man, why do they get on me when I miss a gang night, right? It's called us caring for you, right? It's called God's plan for your life. Right? Man, why do, why, do, why do when you come to church, they always say lift your hands, right? Why? Because it's God's plan for your life for, him, for you to worship him, amen? How come every time I come to church, they always collect money? Why do they always take offering? Because it's God's plan to bless your life, amen? The Bible isn't filled with a bunch of rules, but it's God's plan for success for your life. See, we train hard. We follow the plays. And we begin to see the fruit, which allows us to do this. And this is one of the main points tonight, is that we stay in the game. One thing about a winning team is that the team stays in all four quarters. Is that a winning team doesn't give up. A winning team doesn't walk out. A winning team doesn't give up on a teammate. A winning team doesn't just walk away. A winning team doesn't just give up. But we need to be a generation who won't give up. See, today, in our generation, giving up is already an option. But in God's anointed now generation, I said in God's anointed now generation, giving up is not an option. In our generation, giving up is not an option. In God's anointed now generation, giving up is not an option. In serving God, giving up is not an option. It's not an option because God says, hey, when you're feeling weak, I'm going to be your strength. Hey, when you don't know what to do, come seek me, seek my wisdom, right, in, your, in, in my word, right? God's always there for you. When you feel like giving up, God says, no, 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 I'm right here with you. So giving up is not an option within God's anointed now generation. And it's important that you and I grasp that. It's important that you and I hold on to that. Is that I will not be a gang warrior who gives up. I will not be a gang girl who walks away. I will not be a gang leader who gives up on my generation. But I'm going to be a gang member. I'm going to be part of God's anointed now generation to the day I meet Jesus in glory. I've seen too many people walk away from God. They're not willing to stay in the game. But you know why they weren't willing to stay in the game? Because they didn't know what was going on in the game. They weren't following the plan. They weren't following the plan because they didn't show up to practice where they had to train hard. Right? You ever had those guys that just come up in the game and thinking they're all that, right? They don't know what's going on, right? Because the coach changed everything last minute. 
But we got to be a generation who's willing to stay it in, stick it out for the long haul. We got to be a generation who's able to, who, when the, how they say, when the going gets tough, we just get tougher. Amen? Like I said, I've seen too many people walk away from the Lord because it got, it got too hard. Serving God got a little too hard. Man, I'm just tired of everybody getting in my business. So they, what do they do? They walk away from the Lord. When it got tough, they walked away. When it got a little uncomfortable, they walked away. But regardless of whatever we're going through, whether it be pain, whether it be emotional stuff, whatever you're going through today, don't be one who walks away. You and I have a great future. You and I are, are walking. You guys, are, you, well, you and I are walking into our success. The Bible says that the promise that was given to our ministry says that you, I want you to point to your neighbor and say, you are going to inherit nations. I didn't just say your apartment. I didn't just say your apartment building. I didn't just say your family. The Bible doesn't say you're going to inherit your block. It doesn't say you're going to inherit your city, but the Bible says that the promise for you, because you're a part of this great vision, you're a part of this great movement, the greatest promise that is given to our movement, it says that you, you Mike, you Eddie, right? You Isaiah, you Chris, okay, I won't forget the girls, right? You Re, right? You Brittany, Ashlyn, you're called to inherit nations, Amen. God bless the two of you. I said you're called to inherit nations. You're called to inherit nations. Like I said, not just your city, not just your school, not just your workplace. You're called to inherit not one nation, but the Bible says nations. There's nations with your name on it, right? There's nations with your name on it. But you got to stick around to win it. You can't be one who gives up in the fight. But you got to be one who stays in the fight. You got to be one who fights in the battle. You can't give up. Because why? Because we're marked for success. Success is already there. The nations are already there. But how do we forfeit that? When we're not willing to learn. When we're not willing to train, when we're not willing to, to really go in deeper with God. See, because the deeper you go, you need more understanding of God, right? The longer you serve God, you can't just settle for milk, right? You got, you got to desire some meat from now on. <laughs> oh, man, I got to grow, right? So you got you to gotta, you gotta grow deeper with God. You got to be willing to train hard. And the more and more you train, the more and more you realize how important it is to follow the plan of God. God says, man, I have all this for you. And the road marked to success goes like this. But don't try to make your own way, right? When all that stuff delays it, right? Like I said, 40 years. You and I could be in nations tomorrow. You and I could be in those desolate cities next week. You and I could be you could you and I could be in a different city next month. Right? You and I could be sent out any time now. You could go home this tonight and Pastor Joe will give you a call. You could go home tonight and Pastor Ryan says, Hey, they need help in Chicago. You want to come with me? Right? But are you ready? Are you ready to train hard? Are you ready to go in deeper with God? Are you ready to go in deeper with God so you understand him more, right? You follow his plans for your life. See, one thing about the plans of God for your life is sometimes you don't even understand them. I had a good job, brand new car, right? I think I always say this, but I want you to understand something. Is that the plans of God are not your plans. 
right? The plans that God has for your life are things that you can't even fathom for your life, right? I, I never once, I, I don't know, I, I hardly tell people this, but when my wife and I got married, we actually promised each other that we wouldn't be in full-time ministry. But how does that song go? Take a look at me now, right? Trip out on this. Both of us are in full-time ministry today, right? But it's because of this. It's because we understood that God's plans were not, you know, our plans were not like God's plans, right? We understood that, man, when the plans that I have, the white picket fence and the big house with the dog named Spot, those are all great. But God says, how that, 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 yeah, your plans are kind of cute. But my plans for your life are way greater, right? The plans that I have for you are way greater than the plans that you have for yourself. But we got to stick around to see the plans fulfilled. And I'm going to ask you if we can all stand tonight. When I think about being marked for success, I also think about the prodigal son who had an inheritance. He had an inheritance, he had a great inheritance. And he went to his dad. He said, hey, you know what? I'm paraphrasing. The Bible doesn't say it like this. He said, hey, pops, give me everything I have coming to me, and I'm out. I don't want to be here no more. And what happened? He was marked for success, right? His inheritance was great. But he didn't train hard for it. Nor didn't he didn't understand it, so he didn't value it. So what did he do? He got it. He squandered it. And found himself eating with the pigs. My friend, you and I are marked for success. See, the prodigal son didn't follow through with the plan. His inheritance was for later on. There was a plan in place, but he wanted to make his own plan. He wanted it now. Give me what I have now. Give it to me now in a selfish way. But he didn't value it. His dad gave it to him. And what happened? It's gone. See, it's important that you and I, we understand the promise. See, see, we're, we're promised success. You and I are marked for success. And I want you to understand this, that it's there. The Bible, I don't know about you, I, I believe the word of God. I believe the word of, I believe every word of God. Every word that is preached, every word that is read from the word of God, I believe it. So if the Bible says that, that I'm going to inherit nations, if the Bible says that, man, I, I, I need to hold that dear to my heart, I'm marked for success. But I understand the process to it, too. See, I said that about the prodigal son because today in our generation, we want everything now. There's some labels on our generation. We're called the microwave generation. See, there's this thing that God has for your life. It's called the process. I know some of you are like, wow. Some of us are going through the process. Some of us think the process is over. It's not. But there's a process to your promise. Just like there's a process to our promise. And we got to follow the plan of God. We got to train hard so when that day comes, when deployment day comes, when we get the call, when we get that text, when we get that email, when we're sitting in that meeting and they say, I need 10 people to go here. And you begin to, re God reminds you of the promise. Desolate cities, desolate cities. Are you going to be ready when that call happens? 
Are you going to, not only are you going to be ready, are you going to be willing when that call happens? Are you going to stay in the game till the end? Are you going to stay in the game till you meet Jesus in glory? Are you going to stay in the fight? Are you going to stand on the battlefield? Or when times get home, you, when times get hard, you're going to grab all your toys and go home. We need to be a generation who stays on the battlefield. One of the greatest examples we have is the pioneers of our generation. I had the opportunity to sit under one of our elders. He died serving the Lord. He was in South Africa. He was there for a meeting. He was running, he was jogging, he had a heart attack. Trip out on this. He still didn't go to the doctor. He stayed for the meeting. They planned, they strategized for South Africa. He came home, he went to the doctor, he found out he had a major heart attack. Did that stop him? No. Did he continue to serve? Yes. Did he serve all the way till he passed away? Yes. See, this is the greatest example we have. We have our pastors, we have our elders that I could tell you this, it's safe to say this, that they're going to serve God till the day they die. Come on, let's give Jesus praise for that. And I could say this, is that if they could do it, you could do it. If they could stay in the battle, you could stay in the battle. If they could stay on the battlefield, you could stay on the battlefield. If they, can, if they can persevere, if they could go through no matter what they're going through, you could do the same. You and I are marked for success. But don't mess up the plan. So tonight I want to open up the altars as the worship team begins to worship. I want to open up the altars for those that say, hey, I'm marked for success.